welcome back to In the Element, the figure skating show where we break down and recap competitions in the figure skating world. Hi, I'm Kathy, and I'm here today with my co-hosts, Sammy and Emma. As a reminder, please follow us on Instagram and Twitter at In the Element FS to stay up to date with figure skating news and send up questions that you want us to talk about on our show. Feel free to also check out our previous episodes covering figure skating at the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. In this episode, we will be talking through our 2022 World Championships podium predictions. Be sure to let us know what you all think in the comments below. Let's talk about worlds in France this year. So I think the worlds after the Olympics is always an interesting one because I feel like it almost like gets overshadowed by the Olympics a little bit. And I feel like a lot of people use like the Olympics as their last hurrah. So there's not, there may not be like the most like top, top, top competitors coming out of the uh, Olympics for this world. So also there's a lot of other things going on that just makes this world like super just weird in the first place. We didn't even know that like this was going to even happen because of COVID. So what are your guys' thoughts? Yeah, definitely. Everything you said, Kathy, is definitely true. I think it's always a little bit weird with people who are withdrawing because they're retiring or considering retiring. But also this year specifically, um, Nathan and Yuzu both are withdrawing due to injury. So specifically in the men's event, we're losing our two top competitors. So that opens a lot of doors for people who maybe weren't in the top few places at the Olympics, but now have an opportunity to move up within the rankings. Yeah, yeah, I would say, yeah, definitely, you know, those are some of the top players. We definitely can't write off, you know, people like Yuma and Shoma, but also just makes, I feel like, number two and three a little bit more, like, I feel like in men's skating, like, the number ones and the number twos and the number threes are so far ahead that usually you can make pretty clear predictions. But because so many big names are dropping out, I feel like when you get to like the three, four, five people, their points are sometimes like depending on how they skate around the same. So it might be a really, really close call versus typically I feel like we see a bigger point gap um, in the men's, like what we saw at the Olympics, for example. And then also acknowledging, you know, the elephant in the room that Russia has been completely cut out of this world, Um, everything happening in Russia, the attack on Ukraine, but um, in general, it's just a very sad situation for everyone affected, athletes included. And that being said, that situation makes the world itself for figure skating very different than it would have been if Russia were there. And in some ways, um, a little bit more interesting because we will end up seeing uh, medalists that we wouldn't have otherwise seen. Right. And I think the fields most impacted by that change would definitely be the ladies where the Russians used to just take the top three spots almost always. And we also see that affect pairs, actually, because besides Sui and Han, who are not competing because one they had their last hurrah at the olympics their olympics was beautiful probably one of my hands down like favorite moments of the olympics so i'm so happy for them that they had their like last hurrah and you know with all the injuries that they had like i'm so glad even if they could skate that they're not skating and they're you know taking the time to you know take care of themselves after the Olympics, which must have been a lot. But with that said, pairs is also affected a lot by this change because two, three, four were all ROC. So that also brings up a lot of interesting things in pairs where people like the US pair skaters might be looking at like medals. So that could be interesting to see things shift around in a podium that we haven't seen before. Yeah, and also to bring up that China is also not sending anyone to the world championships well i I won't say it definitely impacts who the medals are going to be except maybe for pairs but we knew that swing han probably weren't going to go to the worlds after olympics but that's also just another consideration to take in mind so i would say the main switch ups for worlds after olympics are injuries retirements the situation with russia and also the situation with china not sending anyone so yeah last thing before we jump into our predictions is that the other Chinese pair actually did score very high at the Olympics yes. as well. So even if Sui and Han did not compete in this world, they are also out of the game, which makes the like the pairs field 
go way more deeper than normal. So that would be interesting to see. So with that said, let's jump into our prediction. So let's start with the men's category. Emma, what do you have as your top three? So give me your gold, give me your silver, and give me your bronze. So for me, I th- I see gold is going to Yuma, silver is Shoma, and bronze as either Junwa Cha or Vincent. So I have a couple reasons for my ranking. So I think Yuma is a good chance for gold because he's coming off that Olympic momentum. And also he's young and doesn't have as much pressure as maybe someone like Shoma would have going into another world. Um, Then for Shoma, I think he had some solid skates at the Olympics, had some not so solid skates. So I think he'll definitely want to try to finish this season strong, especially since we're not really sure about what his plans are after after the season. And then for my bronze medal, I'm between Junhua Cha and Vincent because I think Junhua has been very consistent the past few competitions, landing his quads and performing well at high pressure events. Um, meanwhile, I think Vincent has all the technical content to place in the top three, but he really needs to overcome his mental challenges from having to withdraw from the Olympics. So I think it will be a little bit difficult for Vincent still. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I would say like mine is a little bit similar. I I would say my gold medalist is the same. I think Yuma has a really, really solid chance. Just that consistency and the pressure that he's able to you know, take on, even though this past Olympics was his first Olympics. So I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, takes the gold medal, especially with Nathan and Yuzu out. I would say I had my silver medalist as Vincent, but I feel like both, Vin- okay, so to preface this, my bronze medalist, I'm thinking Shoma, but I feel like both of those skaters like give me a little bit of a heart attack sometimes because <laughs> I feel like they're both, like, you know, they can do so well. And I feel like I'm always rooting for both of them. But at the same time, they're like one of those skaters where when I watch them, I get super nervous because you never know how they're going to do. They could either do really well or they could have like a really bad day. Um, So I'm really hoping, you know, just like for Vincent that he gets like that comeback after, you know, having to withdraw, unfortunately, from the Olympics. But with that said, I'm also a little bit of like worried that he's going to put too much pressure on himself. Like yeah. thinking that this is my chance to shine because I didn't get that moment at the Olympics. So Worlds is my moment. And I just don't want him to put too much pressure, kind of like carry that Olympic weight over to this competition and have that negatively affect him. So hopefully he stays mentally strong. And if he does so, I do think he has the technical content to get the silver if, let's say, Shoma has a bad free similar to you know, kind of what his Olympic free kind of looked like. And with that said, that's why I put Shoma as my bronze medalist, because I feel like Shoma always is just unexpected for me. And his like, quads are not the most like consistent and stable and sometimes a little bit squirrely and his jumps scare me sometimes. I can still see him meddling, but probably maybe closer to your bronze. But I can also very see someone like a Junwon come in um, if Shoma makes too many mistakes in both the short and the free. Yeah, I had very, very similar predictions. Um, I also put Yuma, Vincent, then Shoma with big question marks around Vincent and Shoma. And I also put Junwan Cha in there as probably fourth. So I think one other thing to note with the Vincent situation is he's a bit more of a hopeful second, like you were saying, Kathy. And something to note is that he's probably been a lot kind of I want to say a lot harder at work since getting back from the Mm. Olympics, perhaps compared to Mm. other skaters, because he really lost uh, 10, I believe, 10 days, whatever the quarantine time was of training while he was in Beijing for, you know, the positive COVID test. So that may not seem like much, but uh, in terms of momentum and the progression of the season and competing, that can really impact you and with travel and everything. So he's at a bit of a disadvantage in that regard, not just mentally, but also perhaps training wise. So I just really want to see him come through. I mean, he's worked so hard this entire season. So even though he's had some falters this season, I think he can pull through. However, I think I struggled a bit in terms of whether or not I wanted to put Jun Wan Cha on the podium because I thought that he's really been someone who has more clearly been 
on an upward trend than someone like Vincent, in my opinion. However, I think that if Vincent and Shoma were to skate, you know, reasonably well and do as many of their quads as possible, then I don't think that Junwon Cha would be able to mm-hmm. beat them unless he skates like just through like even base value because exactly. they have so many more quads. Exactly. exactly. And I think Junwon is in a position where like next season he could probably add another quad or two and really do amazing um, and start to place amongst these men. But yeah. who knows, maybe he could break through now. <laughs> yeah, you make a really good point about Vincent. And I think one thing that might be interesting is that in a way, because he wasn't at the Olympics and under that spotlight, he probably didn't have as many like media obligations mm-hmm. or things that a lot of skaters who win, you know, your gold, silver and bronze, you know, all the press stuff that they have to do after, you know, that also takes a lot of energy, like sponsorships and all that stuff, along with having to train right out of the Olympics is a lot to deal with. So it almost feels like maybe he had the time to mentally zone in and focus on one thing, rather have to like think about these other obligations. So maybe that could help, maybe that could hurt. Um, You never know. Yeah. And there's also the extra redemption factor for him, not just from this Olympics terrible experience, but from Worlds uh, last, last year, year right. not even um, getting to do the long program. So that's another thing I'm sure that will be in his head, um, hopefully in a positive way. What do so. you guys think about the ladies podium? A much more open field now that the Russians are not attending. So curious to see what you all think. Well, I would definitely say my gold and my silver goes to Kaori and Wakaba from Japan because we love our Japanese ladies uh, at least I love them and Kaori you know got the bronze despite all the pressure at Olympics and people expecting the three Russian girls to take gold silver and bronze so I definitely see Kaori on this trend and she's so consistent. So she's not one of those skaters where I really worry about. So I can see her easily becoming the world champion of this year. And I think Wakaba, I hope she attempts both her triple axles in the short and the long like she did for the Olympics. She skated super well in the Olympics. I thought she was really underscored. So hopefully, you know, Worlds does her justice. I think she's definitely up there for the silver, especially if she lands those two triple axles. And then I would say, my bronze is where it gets a little bit more interesting, where I feel like before we never even thought of the prospect of these other countries because the Russians were always there. But I think the bronze becomes interesting because I honestly didn't know who to pick between Young Yu and Luna Hendricks. I love rooting for Luna just because I love just seeing a different country get out there, especially since the Russians are not going to be at this Olympics. It would be nice to see more representation across the board of different country and just pushing skating forward in these all, all these different countries. So I'm really rooting for her and I feel like she was a bit disappointed by her Olympic performance because we all know that she could do better and she knew that she could do better so I feel like world is also her chance to shine one more time but also with that said my other pick for my bronze medal because I couldn't pick was Young Yu. I think she also skated beautifully at the Olympics. I think it will depend on if her triple axles if she takes a fall on it or if she gets a under rotation or a downgrade or something like that so it's a close call but we could definitely be looking at a more diversified podium for this year what do you think sammy i think very similarly i had Kari first and wakaba second and then i have young Yu, but also i'm not sure because i feel like hai and lee could beat young Yu again like really? she did at four continents especially because she's really young doesn't have any pressure on her or of course she has pressure but perhaps not as much as someone coming off the olympics but i am not sure that the judges will give her high enough pcs to actually place if she does a perfect you know program and then i would have wanted to put luna but i think she has an injury right now so i put her off the podium i think she might place like fifth or sixth, depending on how she's been able Mm. to train and and how lucky she gets in terms of her injury, hopefully not bothering her too much. I think Mm. someone who could also do super well is Alyssa. Mm -hmm. I I see her around that fourth, fifth, sixth area where she might have 
not been there before, especially since she was able to place, I believe, seventh at the Olympics, even with the Russians there. Yeah, I think my predictions are very much similar to you both. So I have Kari as first, Wakaba as second, and third I have Hayden. So I think, like you guys mentioned, Kari is coming off a super consistent season. I think the Olympics is really a confidence boost for her because she just, it's kind of like the validation she needed that she can actually do this. And coming to the field with no Russians, I think she has a really good chance at gold. For Wakaba, I also do agree that I think she was underscored. So I think this is going to be her redemptive moment. World, she really has an opportunity, nothing really to lose, at least from my opinion. And I think she can really do well if she lands her triple axles and the skates as well as she did during the Olympics. The reason I put Hayen as third instead of someone like Young Yu is because I think that Hayen is coming off a strong four continents and also she has something to prove for not making the Olympic team because Young Yu and Elam Kim went to the Olympics and she didn't get to. I think she'll really want to make sure Worlds is like the highlight of her season. Another reason that I had was because I feel like Young Yu might be a little bit tired going into the World Championships because at least for Korea, I believe within the past three or four months, they had ranking competition, nationals, they all went to four continents, and then they had another competition after the Olympics. They had the Olympics and then another competition after the Olympics, and now they're going to Worlds. So that's a lot of competing in a very short amount of time, and it'd be crazy to see someone not get fatigued from that much competing. So I put Hayen as third, but obviously it's not really as strong of a thought as first or second okay cool with that said pairs which i think is one of the most interesting fields for this world here because have how many pairs dropped out what do you guys think of pairs emma what are your what are your top three so my top three are the japanese pair mira and kiara second i think will go to karina mcfraser and then third to kanan deluke I honestly don't really have much reasoning besides I think the Japanese pairs consistently have been scoring higher than the American pairs. And then my reasoning between Karen Fraser and Kanda Luke is that Karen and Fraser have been scoring like just very, very slightly above Kanda Luke for most of the season. But I think it's very much open. Like either American pair could be second, could be third, in my opinion. Yeah, I had put again the Japanese first and then I put Kane and Luduk second just because I'm like a big fan of them this season and because I feel like Alexa is always hungry to prove herself but I feel like they might be even hungrier to prove themselves at this world championships because again they they won the nationals they've been doing really well this year and had some issues at the olympics and had they not had those issues they would have been a lot closer to Alexa and Brandon. So I think I'm rooting for them to get the silver. We'll see how it all shakes out. And then I don't have much to say either because I feel like I'm less familiar with the lower ranked pairs in terms of their general points trends and and how things normally shake out. So I'm excited to focus more on of my attention on them and get to know them better through this world yeah yeah no I would say the same I feel like our responses for pairs is like all permutations of the three same teams that are you know next in line essentially I would say when I watched Olympics I feel like Mira and Kira are from Japan did have a special I don't know I like their PCS a little bit more than the U.S. skaters just like my personal opinion and I think they I feel like their skating brings something a little bit different a little bit unique so I I put them as the gold medalist from like a PCS standpoint. I think in terms of my silver, I put Karam and Frazier just because I feel like Alexa does have her fire and I like her story a lot. Honestly, for these two pairs, it's more of like a fan ranking at this point because it really just all depends for the US pair skaters the day they skate because point value is relatively similar. It's just more of a game of who's not going to make mistakes on the day of under pressure. So that's kind of how I thought about it. But yeah, so th- yeah. it's not 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 anything crazy. I really think, personally, I really enjoy Kayla Duke's 
long program, I believe, and their artistry in that. Personally, I prefer their PCS over Alexa and Brandon, just because I think I appreciate their more, a little bit more classical style as well. And so I think that actually their music choice I like better perhaps than at least one of the Japanese pairs programs. But overall, I agree with you, Kathy, that I think the PCS and overall skating quality of Rika and Ruchi is better. So yeah, moving into dance, I think obviously we know unless catastrophe hits, Gabi and Guillaume are going to win and we love them. And we were just so happy that they won the Olympics. So we're really happy that they'll be able to get another world title in their home country uh, in France. That's really nice and kind of go out strong. I don't think we're sure if they're going to continue or not, but thinking more so that they won't. So, And then I put Hubble and Donahue second, although of course it's a really close race between them and Chalk and Bates. I just feel that Madison is, both Madisons honestly, but outwardly Madison Hubble is really, I think, motivated in terms of beating the Russians. And I know the Russians aren't here and that's kind of, <laughs> even another reason that I feel like she'll just step it up and really want to get her silver silver medal. However, they might be more tired than Chalk and Bates. Who knows? They both had to do a lot at the Olympics, so it really could be anyone's game. So I had Chalk and Bates third, but it'll be a very close race. Yeah, I definitely echo everything Sammy said. My ranking is actually the same. I think my reasoning between Hubble and Donahue and Chalk and Bates is that after the Olympics, it also just seems like Hubble and Donahue are just, I don't know, maybe it's because of their skating skills or just their performance at the Olympics. I just think they have a little bit of an edge over Chalk and Bates, even though I really do like Chalk and Bates, both programs. I think they're really, really good and I really enjoy watching them. I feel like how it shakes out is I, I just see Hubble Donahue second and Chalk and Bates third, I think. Mm. That makes sense. I mean, again, this is one of those things where I feel like I'm just going to say another permutation of your choice. Mine is slightly (laughs) different, where I have Gabby and Guillaume first, obviously, because they're incredible and just so sophisticated in the way they skate and the way they interpret music. But I would say for a second, I would pick Chalk and Bates, mainly because I feel like when they went out to the Olympics, it was a very neck-to-neck call, but I felt like the nerves got the best of them at the Olympics because they did make a mistake in the last Olympics. So I feel like the Olympics has this special weight on them almost. So I would love to see them come out to worlds without those nerves and like skate to the best of their abilities. And I still think they would be pretty close to Hubble and Donahue, but maybe the judges would help them with the PCS because I think their programs are definitely more unique. Meanwhile, Hubble and Donahue's programs are a little bit more traditional especially like the free dance so I could see like the judges give them the edge over that if they execute on everything technical like completely smoothly unlike Mm -hmm. the little stumbles that they had at the Olympics so I can see them have a comeback story after Evan not being able to win his fourth chance at the Olympic medal so that was yeah I was like oh man yeah you're completely right you actually do make a good argument because It's kind of like Chalk and Bates. They want to redeem themselves after maybe the Olympics where they were so close, but just didn't make podium. So I do think that they're really going to put in a good fight for Worlds. Yeah, And they, that it could be that they soar out as landing in second. Yeah, so. yeah. And I think Hubble and Donahue are still going to do incredible. But I do feel like, especially for Madison, the Olympics was a big release for them. So I Mm -hmm. almost feel like they're very just relieved and perhaps more relaxed rather than perhaps like that motivated, fiery energy. I mean, I feel like, (laughs) I feel like Maddie will always have that like fiery energy no matter what, but you know, just, I think the Olympics was her dream and the dream and the goal for this year specifically. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. All right, that's a wrap for today's mini episode on predictions for the 2022 World Championships. Be sure to tune in to our World Recap video coming out early next week. And as a reminder, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at InTheElementFS to stay up to date with figure skating news and send us questions that you want us to talk about on our show. 
Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Leave us a comment down below on your opinions and thoughts because if you are a figure skating fan, you are definitely opinionated. Be sure to subscribe. We are available on YouTube if you want to get some snazzy visuals and Spotify and Apple Podcasts if you want to just listen to our crackly voices. Thank you again. Until next time, stay educated.